Hey everyone, I'm back with another AP Statistics video, and today we're going to be talking about the correlation coefficient. Alright, so the definition of a correlation coefficient, for those of you who like definitions, is a numerical value describing the strength and direction of a linear relationship for bivariate quantitative data. Now, bivariate quantitative data, if, if that confuses you, the word bivariate means two variables, and quantitative just means numbers, right? So two variable numerical data set. So down here, right? Height and weight. That's an example of bivariate quantitative data set. Now, what the correlation coefficient tells us is essentially how well related or how poorly related two variables are. For example, I want to talk about height and weight for a second, right? The taller, generally speaking, the taller someone is, the more they weigh, right? Because taller people generally have more mass on them, they have bigger bones, so they're going to weigh more, right? So, generally speaking, we can say, with, we, we can pretty much generally say the taller someone is, the more they're going to weigh. We would say that height and weight are definitely related, right? Because we know if the taller someone is, if someone, someone who is 64 inches or 64 inches tall is going to weigh less than someone who is 74 inches tall. Likewise, someone who is 77 inches tall, if you didn't know what I'm pointing down here, is someone is 77 inches tall they're going to weigh more than 74, someone who's 74 inches tall, because generally speaking, some the m m taller someone is, the more they weigh. The correlation coefficient comes into all this be it, because it's simply a numerical value to quantify the degree of relatedness. How strong is the relationship between two numerical variables? How well, for example, does height predict someone's weight? That is what the correlation coefficient is all about, showing us how well related two variables are. Now this complicated thing here is the formula to calculate it. I'm just going to tell you straightforward that, straight up, sorry, that you do not need to know this formula to calculate it. But for those of you who want to know, what you're essentially doing here is for the, whatever your x variable is, let's say it's height in this case, is that you're taking z-scores. Because remember the formula for z-score is the the data point minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, and you're multiplying, you're finding the z-score for each x value, these are your x's obviously, and you're finding the z-score for each y value, these are your y's, and you're multiplying them together and taking the sum of all of those products. So I'd find the z-score for this x block, this x when this y, and multiply them together, take the, and then do that for each individual pair of height and weight. And then I would take the sum of that and divide or divide it by n minus one how data points, right? That is how it is calculated. However, you don't need to know that for AP statistics, so don't waste your time memorizing it. If you want to know more about it, shoot me a line in the comments, I'll happily explain. Alright. What is important is that you need to know how to interpret the correlation coefficient. That is what AP Statistic cares about. Alright? And so. The important thing to remember is that the correlation coefficient will always be between negative 1 and 1. And in the, it will always be in between negative 1 and 1, right? But in that range, there are certain divisions that show us how strong the relationship between two variables is, how well they correlate. So if r is, is greater than 0 or less than 0.5, we're going to call it, it's going to be weak. The, that means the relationship between the two variables is weak. We can't just follow, we can't go, we can't, for example, but if we, if I was to say the relationship between height and, weight, height and weight was weak, that would mean that, you know, there isn't such a strong relationship between height and weight. I couldn't necessarily predict someone's weight based on their height. It's, the relationship would be very weak. If the value of r is between 0.5 and 0.8, we would call the relationship moderate, which means, you know, there's a pretty good relationship between height and weight. You know, I... I would be okay saying if I knew someone's height, I could guess their weight. And then if the value of r is between 0.8 and 1, we would say there's a strong, strong relationship. That means, hey, if I know someone's height, I can pretty certain, pretty well certain guarantee tell you what their weight is. So those are your three. And remember, these values can also be negative, and we'll talk about the negative means with the same values of prior, right? Between 0 and negative 0.5, we have it's going to be weak. Between negative 0.5 and negative 0.8, it's going to be a moderate relationship. And between negative 0.8 and negative 1, it's going to be a strong relationship. So remember those d divisions, right? 
And of course, important thing to note, if the value of r is 0, there is no linear relationship. Okay? So moving on. I'm just, this is just a picture to show you what these values mean. Again, strong relationship, right? It's If it's, we can essentially, I can tell you exactly based on someone's height, if, this, if the x-axis was height, what their weight would be. It follows a pattern that you can always follow, which is why it falls on that line for both 1 and negative 1. But, you know, the, when you get between the values of 0 and 1 or negative 1 and 0, that pattern doesn't necessarily fall directly on the line. It's not a straight pattern. There's some variability here that kind of weakens the relationship between the two variables, making, harder, making it harder to guess someone's weight best on their height. And then when p is just straight up 0, there's no relationship. There's no way you could tell someone's weight based on their height. And of course, this picture comes from Wikipedia, so thanks Wikipedia. All right. Now, if r is greater than 0, then the relationship is positive. If r is less than 0, then the relationship is negative. Let me show you, going back to the graph here, look at negative 1, right? Notice how when we increase, if this was height, right, I'm just drawing h here, and this is weight, if we increase the height going to the right, well then weight is decreasing. That would be a negative relationship. But if we, but look at down here for positive 1, right? Oh, when we increase the height, the weight is also increasing. That is what those positive and negative signs mean. The negative implies that when you increase the x variable, the y variable is decreasing. And what one is positive is when you increase the x variable, the y variable is increasing. Alright, and of course again, if the value of r is zero, then there's no linear relationship. So moving on. Alright. So here's an example. After this is a classic AP statistics style free response question. After analyzing age and income data, the Bureau of Labor Statistics determined that there is a correlation coefficient between two variables of 0.56. Interpret the statistic. So basically they're asking you to describe what kind of relationship exists between these two variables. So we need to say the strength, the direction, and the, whether well, of course, the fact that it's linear. So let's do that. The strength, right? Well, 0.56. We know that between 0.5 and 0.8 there's a moderate relationship. So we're going to say the strength is moderate. The direction is positive because it is obviously positive. 0.56 is greater than 0. And so our answer, and this is exactly how AP Statistics wants you to word it so you get credit on the free response, is that there is a moderate, positive, linear relationship between age and income. So let's try another example. Sheldon and Leonard looked at a bivariate data set. One was a record of Howard's blood alcohol content. The other was a, the number of letters in the English al alphabet he could name. They found a correlation coefficient of negative 0.23. Interpret this statistic. All right, once again, we're going to need to say the strength, the direction, and the fact that it's linear. So it is a negative 0.23, and going back to our table, we know that between negative 0.5 and 0, there is a weak relationship. We also know that it's negative because of the negative sign. And that you have to state the relationship is linear. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't say this part, linear relationship in your answer, you won't get credit, period, all right? So going back to the second question, the answer is there is a weak, negative, linear relationship between blood alcohol content and alphabet competency. Interesting, right? I didn't think so, but whatever. Moving on. More important stuff. These are just, just tri stupid trivia. You need to know about the correlation coefficient for your class and probably AP Statistics exam. The value of R is not affected by any transformation applied to every data point. For example, if I increase the expenditure level to the right by, or if I shift every point to the right by 6, that will not change the correlation coefficient. If I move each point up by 9, it will not change the correlation coefficient. So long as the same transformation, whether it's addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, is applied to every single data point, there is no change in the correlation coefficient. More Also, the correlation coefficient will be the same no matter how the two variables are graphed. So, switching what variables are on the x and y axes will not change the correlation coefficient. Simply put, if I, if for example, look at this graph right here. Graduation rates on the y-axis, expenditures on the x-axis. It would have, this graph would have some positive correlation coefficient, right? But if I were to flip this, and I were to put graduation rates on the x and expenditures on the y, that would not change the correlation coefficient. If you have two variables, no matter how you graph them, you're going to get the same correlation coefficient. So for AP statistics, they would probably do something like, all right, so 
Suzy decided to switch which variables were on the x and y axis. How will this change the correlation coefficient? It won't. For two variables, it doesn't matter which one goes on the x and which one goes on the y. However you do it, you're always going to get the same correlation coefficient. Last but not least, correlation coefficients are influenced by extremely large or extremely small values, right? Remember, the point of a correlation coefficient is to show how strong the relationship is between two variables. If you have a value that is extremely large or extremely small, or I should say, you know what, ignore the extreme, the large or small part. If you just have a value that doesn't, I'm sorry, if you just have a value that doesn't fit the pattern of your data set, so let's say I had a value of this, this data set here, the between height and weight, has a correlation coefficient of 0.91, right? But let's say I were to add the data point, which has someone of a height of 10, it's a horrible 10, and a weight of 9,000, right? So, I, like we said before, the general pattern is that as someone's height increases, so does their weight, right? But this just throws everything off, doesn't it? This this is so bad. That's a 10 and that's a 9,000. But this just throws everything off, doesn't it? Now we have a 10-inch tall man who weighs 9,000 pounds. That doesn't fit our pattern, right? The point is this, is this is an extreme value. This is a value that does not fit the general pattern of our data set, and that is going to affect the correlation coefficient because the correlation coefficient is a, is a measure of how strong or weak the pattern is. We've taken this very strong pattern, and by adding this weird data set, this this very extremely off-the-grid data set, we completely change the correlation coefficient. We turn it from a very strong positive relationship to a very weak negative relationship. The point is, if you get data points that do not fit the general pattern of your data set, it is going to influence the strength of the pattern and strength of the relationship between two variables, and that is going to change the correlation coefficient. Now you're probably tired of me talking, and so that's all you need to know about correlation coefficients.